Here to say the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome creator and star of Hoovy's Garage, YouTuber and writer with 1.3 million YouTube subscribers, Tyler Hoover. Drivers, start your engine! And that's why he has over a million subscribers to YouTube. Enjoy that command. The engines are fired. We're racing next from the Glen. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Go Bowling. Go to bowling.com to find a center near you. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Visit gocreditone.com. And by Toyota. I want to take a look at the starting grid brought to you by Go Bowling. And up front, we've got Brad Keselowski and Joey Logano, a couple of Penske drivers making it for a one. Yeah, row three, you see Harvick and Hamlin, two drivers that have won here at the Glen, but winless in 2021, looking for that breakthrough. And you see Christopher Bell, row four, inspection issues. He'll start at the rear of the field. Speaking of going to the rear in row six, the nine of Chase Elliott, the two-time winner here at the Glen, will have to start from the back as well. And maybe your spoiler, Ross Chastain, will start in that same row in row six. Yeah, a lot of heavy hitters right here in this. You got Byron back in row eight, Kyle Busch back in row 10. It's going to be excitement early when they drop the green. A little bit further back. You see in row 11, Daniel Suarez, Eric Jones, Michael McDowell, yeah, the, the Daytona 500 winner in row 13. And don't sleep on Chase Briscoe back in row 14. Road course racer, a lot of experience, looking for a good run. All right, we mentioned Joey Logano starting up on the front row. Steve, let's dial him up on the radio. All right, let's see if we can get a hold of Joey here. Hey, Joey, Steve Letard and the guys at NBC booth. You got a copy? I got the loud and clear. All right, man, you're a winner here. We've heard that it's another sellout crowd. What makes racing at Watkins Glen so excited from behind the wheel? About the section I'm in right now through the S is probably the most exciting part. Uh, but just great, great fans up here. Glad to be back. I know it's been a couple of years, so it's uh, fun to be back up at this racetrack. Saw a lot of fans last night. And I jogged the track and saw everyone partying, so I know they're ready to have a good time. And hopefully, we can keep this Verizon 5G Mustang towards the front. Let's get up here. All right, you mentioned the excitement of the S's. Let's flip it. What's the most challenging? The bus stop looks very difficult, the carousel. What's the area of the track that you find most challenging? Yeah, all of it. <laughs> uh, but probably at a bus stop. That's probably the one that stands out the most. Uh, those curbs hitting them at the right angle, making sure everything lines up right for when you have your landing. Because it's a, some people call them curves. I call it a jump. All right, man. <laughs> well, we got a great starting spot. Car looks great up there, and uh, good luck. It's going to be exciting to ride along with that Coca-Cola on board. Happy that. Have fun up there. Thanks, guys. And we will definitely be having fun up here again, radio style. That we'll be calling all of the action from around the racetrack. And again, on pit road, let's go back there for more stories. Here's Dylan. And a lot of great views today, Rick, inside the cars, including the Ford Performance onboard cam with Matt DiBenedetto. It's crunch time for the Wood Brothers team. They're going to make the playoffs again. They're going to have to win. The good news is they put together a nice three-race stretch. The addition of new crew chief Jonathan Hassler has also brought some much-needed consistency, but they'll have to utilize all they've learned recently to parlay that into a successful day, Parker. Right, Dylan, and we're going to have an awesome view on Chase Elliott's car courtesy of Xfinity because he's not going to be starting in that 11th place starting position. He is going to the back after receiving an L1 penalty. His crew chief, Alan Gustin, was ejected. Tom Gray, the engineer, filling in. But for all of you Chase Elliott fans that want to see him get his eighth career road course win, Remember, back at Road America, he started 34th and won that race in commanding fashion, Dylan. Christopher Bell takes us for a ride with the Toyota on board today. We mentioned the issues for the nine car. Similar story for the 20. He so suffered a similar fate, same penalty, and as a result has Adam Stevens off the pit box. The car chief, Chris Sherwood, is calling the shots today for Christopher Bell. And as we've come to find out this year, Christopher's a pretty good road racer. They know that their car is good enough to march through the field by the end of the day today, Rick. Thanks, Dylan. Huge event here at Watkins Glen, and we're so excited about you know the crowd that is here. How about the stars that are coming out? Obviously, a team owner, Michael Jordan, is here. Air Jordan here to watch Bubba Wallace. Uh, he's team owner with Denny Hamlin on that 
2311 racing team. So awesome. I mean, with Jumpman's in the house, you know it's a big deal. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, looking forward to, obviously, uh, another great day at the racetrack here. Now they're coming down to pit road to get pit road speed. And so while they're doing that, after not racing here in 2020, we're thrilled to be back at the Glen, and so are the local fans. Racing means the world to me. It's what I live for. Basically, it's my life. <laughs> Everybody knows NASCAR and the spirit that surrounds it, but I think Watkins Glen is truly special. You can go anywhere in the country and mention Watkins Glen, and the race fans know us. Watkins Glen certainly enjoys a rich legacy of road racing, being the birthplace of American road racing. Watkins Glen is the premier road course. The high speed, the tight corners, the side by side action. It's high speed and it's high banging. It's incredible, it really truly is. It's a action packed uh, race, it's thrilling to watch. It's an experience that you can only get being at the ground. Residents may not see the crowds they are used to in the summer. NASCAR announced they will not be coming to Watkins Glen International this year. Last year was a, a difficult year. It was very disappointing for the town not to have the race. It was strange. Since 1986, the first weekend in August, we were the center of NASCAR. But there's no question you, you could feel a sense of depression in the town. That energy just wasn't here. We resolved last year to come back bigger and stronger. I think a, a lot of people are looking forward to coming back to Watkins Glen. If you're a race fan, you can't wait for this. Words can't even describe the feeling. When he talks about Talladega's infield, I think Watkins Glen is going to be able to blow that off the map. The roar of the engines and the actual start of the race, uh, it's something that's just, uh, it never grows old. I think there's going to be a spirit this year that is unmatched previously. We'll see those cars come back around through there again at full throttle. It's going to be a great feeling. When they drop the green flag, I'll get shivered. Yes, and yes, that's right. He's known as the sunburn guy. Kenny Hunt, yeah, he was a part of the tease there. It's time. You said it. Watkins Glen's been waiting for it, and it's about time to happen again. The green flag here at Watkins Glen, and after a one-year hiatus where NASCAR during the pandemic wasn't able to come to Watkins Glen. Now they're back, and the fans have waited for this moment for over 365 days, over a year. Ready for the green flag to fly it to Glen again. So many stories inside this race. The Chase Elliott come from the back. Denny Hamlin, he's only 13 points in front of Kyle Larson for the regular season championship. That's on the line, as well as the cut line between the RCR drivers. What you've been waiting for? The green flag, and there it is. Radio style from Watkins Glen. Up front, the Penske drivers will fight for that perfect position through turn number one. Right now, Keslowski has it. Logano follows him through one and headed toward the S's. Brad Keslowski will get the jump into the clean air. He'll bring his teammate, Joey Logano, along for the ride as well. Field working for the right-hander. That's turn two. This is turn three. He'll cross the tunnel and head to the back straightaway. Everybody jostling for position on lap one as Keslowski leads them out of turn four. Keslowski out to a comfortable lead here into the bus stop over his teammate Logano right behind him. Blaney and Larson follow through. Blaney struggling just a little bit to keep pace with his teammates. Larson, Hamlin, everybody snaking through the bus stop safely into the carousel. See another battle. Teammates, Hindu teammates this time through the carousel. Keslowski continued to lead. Long back straightaway, Kevin Harvick using all the racetrack. Now, an attempt for a pass into turn six. Martin Truex Jr. getting it done. So it's Martin Truex Jr. that's just about a half a car length in front of Kevin Harvick as they're working their way through seven. 
There you saw Eric Almirola, most recent winner in NASCAR. He was on the outside trying to get another position here at the Glen. Again, the Penske drivers fighting for first and second, but a battle now for third. Three wide. Here comes Denny Hamlin to the inside. Denny Hamlin trying to open up the inside line. Kyle Larson shuts that off. Hamlin still the only one down to the inside. He'll race side by side with Brian Blaney. That is for position inside of the top five. Here's Hamlin, and one car is spun. That'll be the Ryan Newman car. He'll spin to the inside of one. He'll go all the way to the back of the field as everybody has cleared the S's and races to the inner loop. Leaders entering the inner loop now. Looks like Ryan Blaney struggling just a little bit here early in the race. He's gotten passed by Martin Tricks Jr. And now Kevin Harvick comes under attack. Oh, a little bit of contact back here. 21 and the three, a lot of checkup as these guys work through the inner loop, making mistakes, giving each other a break here early in this race. You see Matty D with his Ford performance cam, Austin Dillon all over top, all underneath him, trying to get by. We know Austin Dillon's situation. He feels like he needs to win this race in order to get into the playoffs. Lots of pressure on both of those drivers. Last time down the front stretch, we saw issues in turn one. The six of Ryan Newman ends up spun around. You see him down to the right with a slide through the grass. I don't know if he had to take evasive maneuvers to miss someone in front of him. Somehow, everybody splits him. Chase Elliott just goes through Bell. The guys that had to go to the back, that's their biggest fear, Rick. Having an issue early is now they continue up through the S's. Watching Kevin Harvick being bypassed by William Byron right now. That is for a spot inside of the top 10. You've got Reddick in the eight. You got Byron in the 24 as they begin to stack up in single file formation. Again, racing for a spot inside of the top 10. Tyler Reddick all the way up from 13th position continues to show out on the road courses in this number eight car. Whoa, a little bit loose right there in front of Byron. Byron gives him a little bit of time to gather it in down in the carousel. Reddick looking well here in this first stage, trying to get as many points as he can today. And Byron saw how loose Reddick was right there. That means Byron wants to get that front bumper right through his rear bumper. Even on these road courses, that'll work. Take the air off that spoiler. William Byron saw a weakness. Now he's going to try to figure out how to take advantage of it. And after the last two wins here at Watkins Glen, starting in the back of the field, Chase Elliott has already made up 12 spots. He's moved up to the 23rd position, 25th position right now is Chase Elliott. And they're only going to get more difficult from here as you look out front, that car in front of him, Chase Briscoe in front of him, Chris Buescher as we go down into turn one. You're just going to see how difficult this braking zone is. Downhill, the back of the car gets very, very light, and you see the line of cars in front of him. The key, Rick, patience for Chase Elliott. Don't burn up your equipment only four laps in. Chase Elliott again running in the 25th position up front. It's all Brad Keselowski. He has a three tenth of a second lead over teammate Joey Logano right there through the bus stop. Larson, Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr. all in the top five. Blaney, Look Reddick, it. Byron, and Harvick, as well as Bowman inside the top ten. You can see right here Logano is all over his teammate Keselowski. Was better through the inner loop, better through the carousel. Keselowski's feeling the pressure. Logano going to try to drive in deep, gain some ground, get into the corner. Didn't get in better, but got off the corner better. Coming to turn seven, trying to apply the pressure. Exit this corner better so you can help break him, get into turn one. Too good of a run, Keselowski knows. Pretty good battle here as these two once again come into a breaking zone. That's turn number one. Logano closing in. Trying to get to that back bumper. You see Keselowski lock him up just a bit. A little bit of white smoke there from the right front. Good teammate battle going on here at the Glen.
NASCAR Drive. That's your live race day companion. You can follow your favorite drivers with high definition in car cameras, or you can select an alternate camera angle if you want to see more action. Visit NASCAR.com slash driver. You can download the NASCAR mobile app today. Watching the onboard camera, Joey Logano as he tries to push his teammate, Brad Keselowski, into a mistake. Brad sliding all over the pace. Right behind this 22 car is Kyle Larson, who's joined this battle for the lead. And Joey Logano saw an unbelievably loose Keselowski through that inner loop. A lot of cars sliding around. See Kyle Larson just kind of looking a little bit, making Joey Logano think about his next move. What a great battle for the lead. These three guys, these cars seem very equal right now. Had a conversation with Cliff Daniels this morning, crew chief for Kyle Larson, and he just he can't say enough great things about his driver, Rick. It just amazes him when Larson relives some of these races, the things he points out, the details, the things they can do to get better. He said not only is he a remarkable talent, as we see a little brake lock up on the two, but he has such good memory and recall that he continues to push the car better. Leaders right now working their way up to the S's. Kyle Larson, no doubt, is applying pressure to Joey Logano. All three drivers are basically evenly matched, but one will slip here, one will slip there. A solid turn four exit for all three as they race to the inner loop. And as these guys continue to try to battle for this lead, Martin Trix Jr. back there in fourth place could be closing in on these guys. Pretty interesting to watch Brad make some mistakes, but the 22 not able to capitalize. They go down here in the carousel. Larson, two right there behind him, but not able to really pressure that 22 for the second position. Junior, I think you caught it right there in the back of the screen. See Martin Truex Jr., he's got the fastest car on the racetrack. Look at him reeling these guys in. I said all these cars are pretty equal, but I didn't count this guy in. Martin Truex Jr. has the best car on the racetrack right now. And as we close in on that lap 10 competition yellow, not completely out of the question to see somebody peel off and hit pit road. You can't take fuel before a competition yellow, but if you put some brand new tires on right here, maybe a mid-pack car, that might open up your opportunity. So in the next couple of laps, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Big mistake right there, the two. Continues to slide that right front tire as he enters those braking zones. Dylan. Yeah, he's talking about Martin Truex Jr. You know, chatting with his crew chief James Small this morning. They mentioned how he mentioned how fast they've been on these road courses, but just haven't really had a mistake-free race yet. So that's been their mission this weekend, or is going to be their mission today. We just have to execute, do everything right, just prepare ourselves for the playoffs, where you have to execute every single weekend, or the results can be catastrophic in more ways than one. So good start for sure for the 19 right now, Parker. All right, and that two car for Brad Keselowski. We've noticed in the turn one that right front lockup and almost a puff of smoke each and every lap. The team has been notifying that, especially his spotter there looking down at turn one, just saying, hey, you have a bit of right front lockup, and reminding him each time down in that braking zone that he has that right front lockup, and he hasn't gotten rid of it. So that's something definitely to keep an eye on with the two car, see if he maybe tries to put a little bit of brake bias back in there to get rid of that right front lockup, because the team is telling him that the 22 behind him is beating him down the corners. He's trying to maximize the brakes right now. These top three stay out, nobody ducking down pit road before what we know will be a caution coming out normally at road course racing. Steve, when you talk about strategy, you say, well, just tell me when the cautions are coming out and I'll tell you how to call the race. Yeah, unfortunately, this one's a little bit early to open up too many windows. But this front five bag, man, they are on top of one another. Yeah, it was a battle between three of them. Now Truex has come in, and Denny Hamlin has slowly started to creep into this battle. Now, all they've got to do is get it back to the start finish line and go to pit road, as Kyle Larson now bobbles a bit out of four, and they race their way up the back stretch. They close in on the bus stop again. Nobody really close enough to challenge anybody in the braking zone. Everybody just sort of keeping that one to two car length distance. We've seen some mistakes by the two car, but everybody's sort of making little ones here and there. Brad kind of wide. Gives an opportunity for the 22 to get right up to the bumper. Yeah, Joey Logano's there. Applying a lot of pressure. Brad did not get through the carousel very well. But did it good enough to keep Logano behind him? Oh, really loose. He's spinning. He's spinning right in front of me. Around him he goes. He gets After the swing point, back out. It. Get that thing in first gear. Get it rolling. Hey, man, he's spinning or he's losing a few spots. That wasn't too bad. Those brake issues, obviously a problem for Keselowski as he spun going into turn six. And so now gives the lead up to Logano. There's the competition caution, 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 caution that comes out. Keselowski really lucky. He only lost five spots. He fell back to sixth position. You have to wonder if he was, you know, with the lockups he was having in turn one, was he adjusting the brakes to the rear? And did that make it a little bit loose here and lock up the rears, get the car loose 
into this turn and eventually spinning him out because he had some front lockup several times down in turn one, and you know that Brad and all these drivers are adjusting that brake bias inside the car when those things are happening. Yeah, Junior, the thing that concerns me about that lockup is sometimes that lockup is because of the front end settings, right? So you got two, the tires leaning in too much. The camber the, of the front end is off. It makes the car drive Keep better, coming. but it hurts the braking. The only thing the driver can do then is put rear brake in it. And when he puts more rear brake in it, it's easy to lock the rear tires up. It's easy to get that car spun around on braking. I think you're spot on. The question is, can, is this going to hamper their day? With his inability to brake get into the corner, you know, we just saw what happens if he puts too much rear brake in it. It's not going to work. So is this going to be something that prevents him from winning this race? Well, the bigger issue they have right now is I'm not sure how many guys are going to pit. And after that spin, I would be really concerned if I'm Jeremy Bullens leaving him out on that set of tires. You know, there has to be damage. We saw the smoke come off him. So we just have to see decisions for the two. What a shot, Rick. Yeah, I love this. Ruoff Mortgage really appreciate what they're giving us here with the VAT cam. This is such a great perspective of those cars diving into the bus stop area, actually getting air and flying through the bus stop and into the carousel. So we're thankful to Ruoff Mortgage for helping us out bringing the bat cam back here to the Glen. Yeah, Joey Logano called them jumps, and it's accurate. We have seen all four tires off the ground entering the bus stop. Okay, so I mentioned strategy, Steve. Now we have a caution that has come out. Will guys think tires are important enough, maybe mid-pack to at the end of the you know the pack here will they try to come to pit road to get tires to see if that helps well you know i think there's going to be a few that pit but i you can do this entire race on two pit stops if you time it perfectly the problem is with the end of the stages coming at 20 and 40 you know the field's going to get packed together so just because you have track position if you have tw you know five or ten lap tires is one thing but if you have 20 25 lap old tires you're going to really be under attack from new tires so i expect you know, a front group of cars to stay out right here, keep track position. So we'll probably split decision. That's the problem for Brad Kozlowski is I think his decision, unfortunately, was made with that issue when he spun out. I think he's going to have to come get fresh tires. That decision will be shown here in just a moment. We'll see who makes the right-hand turn. Again, coming down pit road backwards for what they normally would be doing. And, yes, Kozlowski does come from the sixth position onto pit road, but so many others are going to stay out. We see now Kurt Busch in the one also making his way down pit road, as well as Chase Elliott. He had made his way up and was really looking strong up in the top 20, and he also is on pit road. Parker? As you see a ton of cars come down pit road here, including Chase Elliott, as you mentioned, who struggled a little bit with the rear in the car. Kind of a consistent theme across many of the cars in the field, like that two car we saw spin out there. Many struggling with being very loose on the entry of the corners. So you're going to be four Goodyear tires for the nine car as well. As you see at the bottom of your screen, the two of Brad Kozlowski, that team lowering the air pressures and doing a couple different adjustments to try and tighten up that two car for Brad and asking him to help a little bit on the brakes. We'll be back from Watkins Glen just after this.
This time it's going to be Logano and Larson that will make up row number one. Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin behind them as we approach the Geico restart zone. So Ryan Blaney peeked to the inside there of Martin Truex Jr., but they stay two by two, and Larson way out wide as he goes through one, and it's going to be the 22 of Logano that holds on to the lead. Oh, Larson's got a handful, though, and he brings it back on course right across the nose of Martin Truex Jr. It's Logano the leader, got Kyle Larson in second, Martin Truex Jr. in third, and now they start to stack it up from fourth on back. Denny Hamlin in the 11th with a pack of snarling race cars behind him. Blaney and Reddick going to argue over position into this bus stop. Blaney backs out a little bit. Give Reddick another position. He's offline a little bit. Blaney's going to dive down the inside, not the position that Reddick wants to be in. He's going to have to fight hard on corner exit here, Jeff. Yeah, Reddick's got to put a ton of effort into this corner exit. Great job right there. Reddick on that top lane able to beat Blaney down this back straightaway. Really good job by Reddick, not giving up. Not feeling like he was out of position. He just kept fighting. Good racing, guys. The fight is for the ninth position, and now Blaney under fire from William Byron in the 24s. He looked at the inside through seven, and now they go single file down the front stretch here as they throw themselves into turn number one. Again, it's Logano just in front of Larson. Larson has been strong, but so is Martin Shrex Jr. We'll see how they do. Again, the end of the first stage happens at lap 20. Here come the leaders into the S's, looking back on Kyle Larson's car. A very low entry now into two. Now through three and across the four for Larson. Now it's turning into a two-car breakaway with Logano in the 22 and Larson in the five. Now Larson's car looked really out of shape to the S's, but he loses no ground to Logano as they break into the bus stop here. The field hustling down in across that curb. We saw Logano and Larson battling in second and third position, but now Without Brad Keselowski in the way, can Logano keep this lead? Yeah, and right now, Larson doesn't have any pressure from behind, so he can change his line a little bit. He doesn't have to play defense whatsoever because Truex is not close enough. So he can enter the corner a little bit later. He can try some things without, without fear of having an opportunity for someone behind him to take this position. We're looking for Larson to push right here. Larson still putting a lot of pressure on the 2015 winner of this race, Joey Logano, who's out front right now, but just a car link separating the two, and here comes Larson, looking to the inside as they dive in turn number one. Looked down low for a moment, had to back away. Larson looked like he had the run, but instead he'll lose a car length, maybe a car length and a half. Here's the right-hander turn two. Larson again out of shape in the S's. That's two laps in a row. He's had to hang on to that race car, and this time it's going to cost him some ground. He'll lose about three car lengths to Logano, who brings the pack onto the back straightaway. We saw the five-car Larson had good pace. They rode America, but lost it on the long run. Is he abusing those tires a little bit too much here early in this race? to be able to have the pace at the end of the stage. Martin Trex Jr. sees all of this happening, sees the five car back in, moving around. He's trying to close in and put the pressure on. Yeah, I think if Martin Trex Jr. can get to Larson, they'll be a little patient. <laughs> Larson really cut off Martin Trex Jr. up the S's on that restart. Drivers don't forget those kind of things, so there won't be any room given to Larson by Truex. Joey Logano probably isn't breathing any easier, Dylan, now as he has about two car lengths over the five. Yeah, and he's got a radio problem. The team can't hear him. Joey can hear the team. They had him come by the front stretch and wave if he could hear spotter TJ Majors trying to talk to him. He did that, but Joey can't relay any information to the team, so that's going to present an obvious challenge here. Long way to go. It's early to have radio problems, but the battle for the lead's headed up the S's bag. get in there. There he is. Joey Logano, Kyle Larson hot to trot right behind him. Behind Larson, you've got Truex and Denny Hamlin hovering, waiting to pounce. Focusing right now on that Truex and Hamlin battle. It's stretched out just a tad, but again, it's starting to tighten up for the lead. Great run up through this is for Larson there as he closed the gap just a little bit, but still not close enough to really push the 22 of Logano into a mistake. Logano, a little bit better right there as we're riding on the backhand through the bus stop into the carousel, watch this big diamond for the 22. Way up high in the middle of the corner, it helps him turn and get a great runoff on corner exit. That's an advantage right now that he can take because Logano has a gap over Larson. If Larson can close, close that gap, Logano won't be able to do that because Larson will drive it underneath him. So right now, he should take advantage of that. Look, 
as we ride along with Matty D on this great camera. Right ahead, him, Eric Jones, sitting there running at 12th. A really good start on this race for Eric. Been a tough year for Eric. Ran the Xfinity race yesterday, ended up getting into a big wreck. That experience paying off right now. Eric Jones at 12th. It's decision time as we see lap 17 come on the board, Rick. First big choice was the comp yellow. He saw half the field pit, half the field don't. As you see Brad Kozlowski to the inside of Matt DiBenedetto. This next time by, it's the same decision. Do you pit before the end of the stage or do you stay out and get stage points? We'll see what the leaders do. You have to wonder about Brad Kozlowski. And those new tires as he climbs, trying to get into the top 10 for stage points. The battle for the lead here through the exit of the bus stop. Still pretty hot, man, that five car. He's all over the racetrack, but he's able to keep pace. Really driving that car extremely hard, trying to get by Logano. See what happened right there. It was Joe, I mean, sorry. Larson closed that gap, and Logano was not able to use the racetrack over there in the carousel like he had the lap before. So he didn't get that advantage down the back straightaway. Logano still holding on to about a two car length advantage over Larson and then it's Martin Truex Jr. as Bagman put it ready to pounce if either one of those drivers make a mistake and Steve we're seeing now drivers diving onto pit road and again two laps before the end of the stage is when they will close pit road so an opportunity for drivers to get on to pit road now Dylan and Kevin Harvick one of those cars that's going to take advantage of this opportunity four tires and fuel hasn't said much on the radio but they'll go around and change the right side pull a windshield tear off as well Ryan Blaney in below him as well he's reporting that his race car is just a little bit tight right now four tires and fuel for the 12 as well Parker right Matt DiBendetto also on pit road here before the end of the stage very excited coming to this race after their run at Road America say we've got a ton of road course speed in this 21 car this could be one of our best chances to finally get this car back in victory lanes. You see four Goodyear tires for him and a lot of the field coming off pit road. And all of this works, Rick, because the leaders here off the carousel, you don't lose a lap. The laps are so long, you could pit under green, stay on the lead lap, but the pressure from Larson on to Joey Logano is there. He's right on his rear bumper. Now that they've stayed on the racetrack, they're going to want to try to win this stage, collect as many points as possible. Again, Playoff points available, and will Martin get there before he did? He get to he got to the entrance of pit road. You saw when pit road closed, the red light came on. That's the second that Logano got to the line, and now a battle for the lead. Larson looked to the inside, wasn't able to make the pass, and they'll fight their way up to the S's again. Larson got in way hot into one and had to back away. He almost made contact with Logano, and by checking up to avoid the contact, that's going to cost him four car lengths. Logano in the 22 away by four. You got Larson there in the five, and now Denny Hamlin, your new third place runner as we head up the back stretch. That was almost near contact for the leaders there, and I think this five car will have time to be able to close back in for another opportunity at trying to get that stage point through the carousel. A little bit tighter line than the 22. The 22 tries to drift on the track to get that run off the corner. Yeah, that move by Larson into one was super aggressive. Was able to not make contact with Logano, but how close that was, I think that took a little bit of energy out of Larson. Can't push too hard right here and get in trouble, so looks like to me Logano's gonna take this win. Larson and Hamlin racing for points, trying to battle for that regular season championship. Came in only 10 points apart. More issues for the two of Brad Kozlowski. Guys, you guys have talked about it. It's a braking issue, it seems, as the two has rear lock up again. Big slide into turn one. Somehow doesn't spin it out, but the issues on corner entry continue for Brad Kozlowski. Leaders right now coming into the S's for the final time in stage one. Logano's got a comfortable lead. All he has to do is keep it on the racetrack. Kyle Larson giving chase and doing everything he can to catch him. But right now, Larson Dale Jr., about three, maybe four car lengths behind him as they race up the backstretch for the final time in the opening stage. Yeah, he's going to have to have a good first stop. Get into the air a little bit better, a little bit quicker than Nagato. He cuts a little bit of that lead, swings the back just a little bit right there. Now he's going to try to close in even more to try to set himself up for a possible opportunity as he gets over to turn six where Jeff Burton is. Yeah, Logano was just a strong run on corner exit. He's able to use that arc in the carousel that helps him down this back straightaway and both of them seem to have really equal braking there's no real advantage for larson to try to outbreak logano 
Logano just has to not make a mistake here going into seven. He's been consistent. Logano out front as they come out of turn seven has about a two car length lead as we see once again the five slide coming out of five or coming out of turn number seven. But it is the green and white checkered flag for Joey Logano gets another stage win. That's number four already of 2021. And of course that's a playoff point trying to accumulate as many as they can before the playoffs begin in just three races from now. So Logano gets the win. Larson, Hamlin, Rennick, and Byron all finishing in the top five. A very eventful stage number one, especially for Brad Keselowski, who started up front and has had issues already. First opportunity to come on to pit road at the end of stage one and a lot are taking this opportunity Dylan and at the top of your screen there is Denny Hamlin just complaining that he is loose laterally in the right hand turns right now four tires and fuel doesn't look like a chassis adjustment for him in the middle Joey Logano remember still having that uh, radio communication issue chassis adjustment for him four tires and fuel Parker and Kyle Larson at the bottom of your screen they're just edgy loose off the corners and tight to turn six and seven to so the last two corners you saw Taking those lunges at Joe Legato, he just needs more out of that five car to be able to make the pass to the play. I like that edgy loose. We have definitely seen edgy loose out of Kyle Larson already today. You see 11 spots made up by Kurt Busch. No tire change for the one team.
day of racing on NBCSN. Behind us here from the Glen, it will be Nashville, Tennessee that takes on center stage, and it's the road through Nashville that is the racetrack. That's the Music City Grand Prix for the NTT IndyCar Series, the first ever race through the streets of Nashville. That's going to be great. We've got two stages to go here from the Glen as the field now approaching the Geico restart zone. It's Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Martin Truex Jr. up here in front. And looking to the inside, Chase Briscoe in the 14 makes it three wide for the lead as they go into one. Briscoe on the inside, he is going to come out in front, but now Martin Trex Jr. working that red and yellow bump area, and it's going to be Martin Trex Jr. off the curb that takes the lead. He will slide through, he'll grab the top spot. You got Chase Briscoe right now in second. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has fallen to third. You got Kevin Harvick in fourth, and then behind them, they're all kinds of stacked up right there with Matt DiBenedetto and a lot of other drivers wrestling for real estate. Very difficult down here for these guys to understand where everyone's at as they try to funnel into a very tight, tight entrance to the bus stop. You see back there in a the pack of several guys trying to run side by side through there. Matt DiBenedetto in the 42. A Chastain just inside the top 10 here battling on the corner of the carousel. Great view out of the score performance cam. See a battle getting into turn six. Ryan Blaney on the outside. Really tight getting into this turn seven side by side. Blaney with a smart move just giving that spot to see Bell. Yeah, Christopher Bell takes a spot away from Blaney and so Blaney falls back just a bit but it's Christopher Bell trying to move up. He's now got the fifth spot. He'll be chasing down Kevin Harvick, who's in front of him. Harvick looking for something good to happen in the 2021 season. Right now, running in the fourth spot. Right now, Ross Chastain giving Matt Benedetto the good look. That is the race for the seventh position. Chastain in the 42 has got some company of his own. Cole Custer there in the 41 as they snake their way through the S's, through the left-hander, which is turn three, and now the right-hander, turn four. De Benedetto starts to pull away. Chastain wants to do the same, but can't. Yeah, Chastain struggled up through the S's. That put him in a very difficult situation to be defensive right here. 41 not getting through there very well. Almirola thinks better of it to go to the outside into the carousel. There's Ryan Newman coming back from an earlier spin in the race. A lot of guys in this shot that need a win if they want to try to make the playoffs. Amarola got his last race in New Hampshire, but tons of pressure on these young drivers trying to get themselves into this series and also into the playoffs. Amarola, he was perfect as far as bowling in the goal bowling number 10 on pit road and now trying to move his way up front. Amarola running in the 10th position. Knocking all 10 pins down as he was bowling on pit lane earlier. But it's Truex up front, Briscoe running second, Stenhouse Jr. and Harvick the top four. Chase Elliott looking at him right there, trying to get by his teammate, Alex Bowman. We're on board with Elliott right now at the entrance to the S's. Bowman's going to run in very tight. Chase has got to back away and now tries to get squared up for the left-hander turn three. Here's Elliott again. He'll look to the outside of Bowman, trying to get the run. Right now, he can't get to the back bumper of Bowman out of four. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of guys struggle with rear grip through the S's, through the L. Look, there's a Carl battling the inside. Eric Jones taking that spot away. We've got a spin right here. Looks like Ryan Blaney has gone around. He gets his car righted. And surprisingly, the caution has come out. Yellow's out, yellow's out. Yeah, that's a quick to, oh, we got a car stopped on the racetrack over there by you, Jeff Burton. Yeah, James Davidson has stopped over here. He came through here. The engine was running, but the car wasn't under promotion. It just, I don't know if the transmission broke, the drive shaft came out of it, something. It had, it had ignition, had power, but it just was not rolling. I'm entering the uh, bus stop here. You see Blaney looks like he got the wheel hopping on the, on the braking zone, loses the back of the car and just can't save it. I didn't know if he had any help or not, but it looks like just a driver mistake getting the corner a little bit too deep. We're seeing these Penske cars. Having trouble with the brakes early, guys. Yeah, Blaine. Get it turned around. Struggling there, and we'll be right back with more of the Go Bowling.
watching the NASCAR Cup Series go bowling at the Glen. Watkins Glen International right now. It's Martin Truex Jr. that's out front. Yeah, got to call by James Small to bring him in before the end of that stage because it makes the fuel window almost, you know, not just tight, but you can't even get there. This yellow, though, big break for all of these leaders. I expect them riding around shut off and coasting, saving gas. This will even them up with the other cars that pit in lap 21, and this is why most of them staying on the racetrack. So you're expecting only one more stop out of the guys up front? One more stop out of everyone who wants to have a chance to win this race. <laughs> there you have it. If you want a chance to win, you're going to come to pit road only one more time. We'll be back for the restart. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Ram Trucks. Only truck to win Motor Trend Truck of the Year three years in a row. Monster Energy, unleash the beast. And by Go Bowling. Go to bowling.com to find a center near you. The National Bowling Day, that's coming up next Saturday, August 14th. And Go Bowling is celebrating by giving everyone in America a free bowling game coupon. You just need to register at Go bowling.com. Rick, how's your bowl again? So I just bowled with my son. He bowled a, a 234 and I bowled a 101. 234? <laughs> it wasn't good. Hey, let me give you a little hint. No bowling against Phil Parsons. He's the right yeah. guy I know. Yeah, he, he has his own bowling ball and shoes. Aerial coverage brought to you by Geico as we're getting ready for the restart here. 13 to go in stage two. And it doesn't look like Briscoe gets a very good start there on the inside. Looks like Harvick now will be challenging for that second spot as they go into turn one. Martin Truex Jr. out in front, side by side for a second. Now Harvick squirts ahead. Now Chase Briscoe finds himself under a lot of fire here for third. Had a horrible restart. He's trying to regroup, climbing the S's. That's Briscoe in the 14. Christopher Bell in the 20. Matt DiBenedetto in the 21 right behind him. They single out through four and make their way up the back straightaway. Yeah, that bad restart by Briscoe cost a lot of guys on that inside line, several positions. Looking at everybody back here in the back. Trying to get into this bus stop without having any problems. A little bit of a lock up there on the six. Oh, the 22 in the dirt up here on the inside of Bubba Wallace. Logano and Bubba Wallace through the carousel side by side. 
Club is going to hang on to the spot. We've seen that outside work in the carousel. Lots of grip up there. Really surprised at Bubba Wallace, but we saw it earlier. You can have enough momentum on that outside line. See Ross Chastain trying to make a move. Kyle Larson trying to work himself back up to the front. A little bit of break lock there. We saw in turn seven. Not sure who it was from. But you would expect Bubba Wallace to be running well. He's got Michael Jordan here on the pit box overseeing there as team owners here. Side by side for position here as Briscoe now under fire from K uh, Christopher Bell on the inside. Christopher Bell in the 20. No he says contact. it's time to go and Briscoe gets into it. Briscoe trying to come back onto the racetrack. He'll bounce off the right side of Christopher Bell and there is damage on the right front of Chase Briscoe's car. It is on the right front wheel well, but he's able to hang on to the spot and keep Matt DiBenedetto behind him at least for now. And the team gets a bit of a sigh of relief as they see no smoke as the cars go into the braking zone and compress on top of those tires down the fenders onto the tire. So both cars, I think, very lucky to pull away with minimal damage and no tire smoke. Let's go back and watch what happened. You see Briscoe way off the racetrack trying to work himself back on and just misjudges right into the side of Christopher Bell. Just thinking Christopher Bell is going to be further to the right. With you, Junior, I think the team made a big sigh of relief not seeing any smoke. Rick, I like that move by Bell. He goes, look, you went over the curb. You're off the track. I'm holding my line. But what a recovery. Let's remind everybody, Christopher Bell started last with Chase Elliott after his fraction early, and he's all the way up to the third position. So that inspection issue not slowing the 20 down. Right now, the 20 is trying to put pressure on the four for second. We're on board with Christopher Bell up to the S's. He trails Harvick by a car length. But right now, Bell's Toyota very, very fast as we watch it come up to the gearbox, trying to get to the back bumper of Harvick. He's got a huge run on the four car. He's going to get into the braking zone a lot deeper. I think Harvick sees what's inevitable, and that's the fact that this 20 car is going by him at some point. So he moves over and lets him have it. Christopher Bell showing some great pace here. We're going through stage two. After a penalty to put him in the back of the field, here he is all the way up to second place. Christopher Bell won the road course at Daytona early in the year. We don't think about him being a great road racer, but he took that win early. Now he's going to try to take the fight to his teammate, Martin Truex Jr., one of the guys we know is the very best on road courses in this series. And Dylan, he is running aggressively right now as Bell up to second. He is, and talking with Adam Stevens before they even really knew they were going to have to start at the back, they still had high hopes. They were very confident just in the package that Joe Gibbs Racing brings to this racetrack and also in Christopher's ability. And it's kind of funny because obviously this is about the furthest thing from his background and what he grew up doing, but he has taken to this like a fish to water, has run well in the Xfinity Series here, obviously running well here today in the Cup Series. High hopes, they know what they need to do, and they're going to go after their teammate now as you see the nine on pit road. I figured something had to be wrong. I know they lost a track position, but he was making no pace in the back. We're hearing now that perhaps he has flat spotted his tires, unable Parker to really continue feel as he needed a pit to get fresh tires. Correct, Steve, flat spotted tires, you know, as you see down here into turn one, once that happens, you start to feel the vibrations, they start to lock up even more. You've got to get those tires off because you can also risk having a tire failure, which would have a severe end of the day. Hey, Parker, this is what we talked about at the beginning. It wasn't a question of if he had pace, it was how hard could he push? You know, you have to push, you have to be kind of conservative, you can't damage your car. No damage to the car, but Rick, I really go back to where he started and what he's expected to do to try to make up this track position. Those are mistakes we haven't seen a lot out of Chase Elliott when it comes to the road courses, other than perhaps the old Roval into the wall, back to victory lane, maybe he can repeat the feat today. Yeah, think about this, and surprisingly, 36th right now is where Chase Elliott is running. Seven career road course wins under his belt and struggling today after starting in the rear. He works his car around the carousel. I'm sure the team's giving him information on what the new strategy is for this team going forward. Try to take care of this car. Let this pit cycle happen throughout the stage. We have to remember, Chase Elliott doesn't have his normal crew chief. Alan Gustafson's not here, so 
making adjustments on the fly, making changes to your strategy on the fly. It's not a guy who's normally sitting in that seat that's making these calls. Yeah, Tom Gray, who's now filling that role for the day. Longtime engineer. I don't question his experience, but there's just something different between suggesting and helping a crew chief make decisions and then having to do kind of that job and be on the radio. It's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts to that. The playoff points definitely are interesting now as we see Reddick and Dillon separated by just nine points. And again, Reddick got seven points in that first stage. He got stage points, which is what these guys are fighting for to stay in the top 16. As the battle continues between the 24 and the 6, I love Reddick's interview, and I know he had the talking points down. We're going to still race how we all have always raced Bagley, and those are good talking points, but at some point, you're the driver missing the playoffs that has to be going through their mind. Well, green flag flies, and that changes everything because that's a new set of circumstances. Right now, they've both done a good job of keeping their nose clean. The question is, Austin is already in the hole with the points that Tyler got in the first stage. Now does he push harder to try to make that up so he doesn't fall deeper into those uh, into the playoff depth there, or the lack of playoff depth below the cut line? Those guys are working really hard trying to get around this sick car Ryan Newman. They got a little bit more pace than him, and they've been fighting hard to try to find themselves in a position to make a pass. And there you go, Ryan slides up the track. It's a little nudge from the three car of Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon, you know he is aware of the points that they've already given up. And he has to get, he has to get aggressive. He has to make something happen. He knows that. The question is, are you going to push too hard? Austin Dillon would. Ryan all on the rear bumper of him. But don't push too hard to get yourself in trouble. There continues to be the races within the race. Points being gained as well as everyone looking for the win here at the Glen. As we go NASCAR nonstop, you won't miss a thing.
Make sure to download the official app of NASCAR and follow the action with free live scoring in car cameras as well as radio broadcast. Search NASCAR in your app store to download and start a free trial today. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series go bowling at the Glen. And as we ride along with Chase Elliott, there's a reason for that. We want to take a look at Spinney fastest lap. It was just turned by Chase Elliott. 72.633 seconds around this 2.45 mile course. And that's clear by about a half a second of the next fastest car. So unfortunately for Chase, though, starting in the back was one thing, but then he's had issues. He flat spotters tires currently in 36. Parker, it's going to be a long way from there back to the front. No doubt they've got a lot of work to do, but having a lot of speed can help that. Another driver who has a lot of work to do and doing a lot of work is that number 18 of Kyle Busch. He started out the race by saying that car needed a lot of help, and specifically in that right-hander at the top of the hill, he was very loose right there, and at the top of the hill getting very loose in the rear end of that 18 car. Most recently, he came on the radio and said, that's better, but it's not our normal for sure. We got work to do, Dylan. And Parker, Bubba Wallace is another car that is battling that same, that similar condition just reporting that he needs a little bit more lateral grip. Well, we saw the team boss. There he is. He's still here. That's Michael Jordan, of course, co-owner of the 2311 race team with Denny Hamlin. And he's here seeing Bubba have a good run. He, he hasn't had a lot of great results on the road courses through the years, but having a career day so far as he runs inside the top 15. Baby steps for this team, of course, in its, uh, its first year as an organization, but always nice when you can come to a racetrack as challenging as this one is and have a good day in front of the boss. Unfortunately for Bob Wallace, gets overtaken by the three of Austin Dillon right here. Three laps to go in this stage. Bubba's going to try to cross him back over to the inside. He's probably going to lose. No, nope. Bubba's going to come to pit road, so he's going to take this opportunity. Come get fresh tires. He knows that the caution's coming out in just three laps, so he'll try to jump in front of the guys that choose the pit at the yellow. Dillon. I just was talking about how he was reporting that he needed a little bit more lateral grip. We see the crew go over the wall with the wrench in hand, so they'll change the left side tires, reverse the normal pit stop here, and now they'll go around to the right as well. So it doesn't look like they're maybe going to put that wrench in the back window. So four tires of fuel. There it is. Late call adjustment in the back in the rear for Bubba Wallace, and he's down and away. Those backward pit stops feel so awkward, Rick. I know it sounds silly, but I, as a tire carrier, when we came to the road courses and you go around backwards, everything you do, I mean, it's like trying to play a sport with the wrong hand. It just feels so backwards. The whole choreography changes. Logano in the 22, just in front of Denny Hamlin. Those two currently running in the eighth and ninth position. Logano, winner of stage one. Back there in eighth, it looks like it's Martin Truex Jr. now who's going to try to get the stage win. But look at how sideways Logano gets here in the bus stop. Oh, my goodness. That is a gigantic slide. And so as those two fight across the start finish line, again, under two laps to go in stage two. It's Martin Truex Jr. out front, Christopher Bell running second, Harvick, Briscoe, Chastain, Larson, DiBenedetto, Lope, uh, Logano, Hamlin, and Kyle Busch all in the top ten. This is the battle for the eighth position. Logano is in eighth. You got Hamlin right there behind him in ninth. And they're just trying to get it to the end of the stage break. Logano had that pucker moment last time through the inner loop. He's trying to hang on to that race car and also trying to keep Denny Hamlin behind him. Denny's going to make a move here in the breaking zone. They're going to argue over who has the right line as they're going to run side by side. A lot of little sheet metal trading there. A little, little beating and banging. Everything's good. Hamlin's going to be able to clear the 22 down into the carousel and take that position away. Two drivers give and take right there. Good job. Let's go on board. You see what Joe Logano's doing with his feet, his hands. Coming down this back straightaway. See him heavy breaking. See that throttle? He hits that throttle. That's when he down shifts. If you don't do that, the rear tires will start jumping up and down and break the rear end, break the transmission. Now easy on the throttle. And watch him come on throttle. That's, a, that's an upshift right there in the third gear. Check that brake. Heavy break, flip the throttle, go to second gear, and try to accelerate hard off turn one. Hamlin's gotten by Logano. One lap to go in this stage. Logano now has been ushered back to the ninth position. He is some 12 seconds behind the race leader. And again, he's just trying to ease his way around this racetrack. 
Dale Jr. in a race car that would appear at least now wasn't as good as it was at the end of the first stage. Yeah, they're struggling with the long run speed on that 22. One car not struggling right now. Martin Trix Jr. on the final lap, cruises out of the carousel on his way to a stage win. Martin Truex Jr., we've seen so many good battles between he and Chase Elliott, but right now Chase Elliott's in the back, Martin Truex Jr. is in the front. Just from Bell behind him, though, has real similar place to Martin Truex Jr. as he comes off turn seven to get this stage win. Looking for stage win. Number five for Martin Truex Jr. He's going to grab it here at the Glen. Four road course wins already for Martin Truex Jr. And he's looking for number five from the Glen here to keep that momentum and build momentum as we get closer to the playoffs. So he will win stage two. Grabbing some points for that regular season is Kyle Larson, who finished fourth, as well as Denny Hamlin finishing in the eighth position. But it was all Martin Truex Jr. in stage two. We'll get ready for the final stage when we return. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Ford. Built Ford Proud. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Visit GoCreditOne.com. And by Coca-Cola. Together tastes better with Coca-Cola. Time now for our Carvana IndyCar update. Here's Marty Snyder. Welcome to the streets of Nashville, downtown Nashville for the Music City Grand Prix. It's been an amazing weekend here, but not so much for the hometown kid. Joseph Newgarden, a big wreck in qualifying. He will start 12th later today. The man to beat, Colton Herta, who quote said after winning the poll yesterday, we are in a league of our own. Can he win for the fourth time in his career from the pole position? IndyCar Racing coming up next on NBCSN. And obviously, NASCAR fans, you're keeping an eye on Jimmy Johnson. He qualified 25th. He also had some issues in qualifying early in the first session. Yeah, he had a little accident in qualifying. He actually had a little bit of contact today in warm-up this morning. Crew's been hard at work. We expect him to take part. And I mean, just such a great track, a great layout in a great city. Colton Herter, yeah. 
you know, people can say, man, I can't believe he would say that about his car. I love this kid. A lot of swagger, and he backs it up with a lot of pace. Yeah, 21 years old. He'll start up front, the first ever Music City Grand Prix. All right, so Rick, we've basically seen two stages. We have one stage left to go, 49 laps. These guys can run in the mid-30s on fuel. So the goal is to get to lap 56, 57 to make your final pit stop. We think everybody could do it on fuel. The question you have is, can you afford to not come get tires now? While tires haven't been huge, someone's going to come get tires. The last thing you want to be is the last car on old tires. You'll be attacked early. So we'll see who comes to pit road here in just a moment. The race is on, though. The first 500 fans to visit NASCAR.com slash Kids500 and enter the code GRAVITY will take home a NASCAR Kids Club Toyota Camry diecast car. Plenty of kids here enjoying the racing from the Glen. Fought so hard for track position. If you know the other side of that argument is if you say, well, I have to have tires, and 20 guys don't think they need tires, you're not gonna pass 20 guys before the pit window opens. So this is the same conversation of, you know, the right call really matters with everyone else's call. No matter what you do, it can be right or wrong depending on the rest of the field. So we expect leaders, Truex Bell, no surprise. They've worked hard for this track position. They're gonna keep it. Not Denny Hamlin. He feels he needs tires for the restart. He's gonna peel off, and that normally kind of puts a line in the field, and there it is. You see more and more drivers following on pit road, Dylan. Yeah, I think if you're if you're that far back, you may as well just come down and try something. So that's the case for Denny Hamlin. Still battling a little bit of a handling issue on the 11 car, but they'll change four tires and fuel looks like an air pressure adjustment. There's the wrench in the right rear as well, Parker. The same story for Kurt Busch in the one car, really loose at the top of the S, as he said, looser than we've ever been here before. We've got to get this thing tightened up. So he'll be making adjustments on that one car and putting four Goodyear tires on, as well as you're seeing them right now on the left side. Crews going to work. And Steve, you're telling me that in about 14, 13 laps, we're going to see a lot of action because that will be the final stop for all the teams. Uh, but a few of those up, up front, uh, meaning Denny Hamlin, dove onto pit road to get those tires. Yeah, so really, you know, everyone who pitted way back at lap 18, 17, which is where the leaders pitted, they've been saving gas under this yellow to get to that most important final stop window. The big question now is, you know, these guys that just pitted, you know, do they pit right away? Do they run a little long and try to have fresh tires towards the end? And if you stay on the racetrack too long and then the yellow comes out, at most tracks, that's a great break. If you're here at a road course, that's a disadvantage. You'd really like to pit before the caution comes out. Get your service done. Martin Truex Jr. leading this race. Again, has great road course experience. We're looking to really get that momentum going once again, get back into the the winning ways that he's used to. He's got Christopher Bell behind him, who's hungry, has won already on a road course to start the season. Kevin Harvick has not won. And, and think about that. A year ago, it was Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin, and we were talking about how those two were locks to get into the championship four because of all the wins, all the points that they had accumulated. And now it's Harvick and Denny Hamlin who were saying, wait a second, these guys haven't won yet. Will they even get into the playoffs as far as will they have championship hopes this year? You're talking 16 wins from last year that have combined for zero so far. I don't believe this can continue all year. One of these guys is going to go to victory lane. But as you look at the top five or ten, Parker, there's other guys that if they went to victory lane like Briscoe or Chastain, Matty D, it would totally upset the playoff standings. It would. But another thing going on right now is that regular season championship. Remember, Kyle Larson came into this race 13 points behind Denny Hamlin. Well, guess what? He scored the most points in stage one and stage two with 16 over Denny Hamlin's 11. He's cut five points points out of that 13 point deficit as we go into this final stage could be big to this regular season championship Dylan. And a tip of the cap to Chase Briscoe who continues to show his road course prowess has a sixth place finish in the last two road courses running fifth plus 18 right now. This is another opportunity for these guys. They've got the track position got it by pitting before the end of stage number one. They have to keep it now and as you guys said boy what a shake up that would be if Briscoe is able to capitalize and put that 14 car in victory lane today. We saw Danny Hamlin come to pit road. How much of a deficit is he going to be in? He's going to start outside the top 25. Toyota Camry up front here, that Camry TRD, the official pace car for today's race. And a beautiful shot of Watkins Glen from up above. Aerial coverage brought to you by Geico today as they go under that overpass there. They go bowling on that pedestrian overpass. 
getting ready for the start of stage three. Martin Trucks Jr. Getting on the gas first as Kevin Harvick trying to follow him in to turn number one and Christopher Bell on the outside in the 20. Larson right there in fourth. Again, fighting for that regular season championship. He has the most wins. Contact made. Larson, a little contact there. And so now the fight is on. The 42, potentially some damage for Ross Chastain. Leaders up to the S's and Truex is away with the lead. Bell in that yellow car, lower left. He is second. And now they funnel out onto the back straightaway. Here's Larson in the five on the move, looking for third. Larson pushing hard to try to get around the four car of Kevin Harvick. Larson has a little bit more pace than this four car. We'll see if the cycles change that a little bit. Down into the carousel, pushing hard. Everybody's tires had a chance to cool off the cycle. As we build temperature, things are going to change. Harvick's been a struggle this year on the road courses. Really everywhere, not the Kevin Harvick we're accustomed to seeing winning races, leading laps. Running well today in third spot, holding Kyle Larson. The fastest guy of the year so far. Larson going to drive underneath him, get into turn seven. Harvick's going to have to just give this spot up. Maybe cross him over. Nope, doesn't cross him over, just tries to stay in line. Larson takes a spot away from Harvick. When we talked to his crew chief, Rodney Childers, before the race, he said, you know what, I don't come in here with a plan. I'm going to call the race the way I feel it, the way the race is going. Well, right now, Harvick running up in the top five, but now he's under pressure for the 42. Here comes Ross Chastain, and he'll take a spot away from Harvick. Chastain opens up the inside line. He'll slide under Kevin Harvick coming into turn one. Now he'll grab a car length over Harvick by the time they get to the top of the S's. Move Ross Chastain now in position number four. Not only has he grabbed the fourth spot, but he's pulled away from Kevin Harvick in the process. The battle of the lead is heating up as Christopher Bell's closing in on Martin Truex Jr. We've never really seen Truex Jr. get any pressure just yet for that lead position, but Christopher Bell is able to apply it. And he made this 19 car make a mistake and open up the door. Christopher Bell struggled early this year, got that road course win at Daytona, but then after that, things got difficult. But lately, he's been running well. A couple runner-up finishes in the last three races. Taking the fight to Martin Truex Jr. right now. And remember, it was Christopher Bell who started off the season surprising everyone with that road course win at Daytona. So we know he is good on road courses. He's been putting the pressure on Martin Truex Jr. Truex Jr. now with about a three-car length lead over Bell as they go across the start finish line and dive back down into turn number one. But it's Trex Jr. with about a three tenths of a second lead over Bell. What a great shot from that Toyota front bumper cam of Christopher Bell's Toyota Camry. He's trying to catch his co-Camry colleague of Martin Truex Jr. Bell's just so smooth through the S's. He'll just dial up right across the rumble strips and he's able to keep pace, but there's a problem. And that problem is at his back door. And that problem is at five car of Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson closes in on this battle for the lead. As we watch, riding on the Ruoff mortgage back cam really helps you show who's getting through this particular part of the racetrack the best. That five car, Larson, is closing in, but can he get close enough to make a pass? Makes it more difficult on Bell, though. He wants to just be on attack mode trying to get this lead, but now has to play a little bit of defense. Has to pay attention to that rear view mirror. All the while taking the fight to Martin Truex Jr. Let's take a look at the Toyota driver update. You see Truex Jr. leading Christopher Bell second, both in a good position. The last driver to win here, not named Elliott, was Truex back in 2017. So he knows what he's doing. He knows how to win here. They're running one, two. The only situation for these two, Rick, last on pit road, lap 18 and lap 17. So they're looking at probably lap 55 for their final pit stop. Three car breakaway up front, Truex, Bell, and Larson. Larson in the five now. He'll lose a car length or two at the foot of the S's. But now as they come rocketing up turn number three, Larson's going to try to regain that lost ground, perhaps maybe cooling his jets just a tad and waiting to see what happens with these front two cars. Yeah, it looks like the five car struggles just a little bit behind these two Toyotas in that dirty air. He's got the pace, but once he gets a little bit closer to them, he kind of struggles with grip of the racetrack while the 20 car continues to keep close tabs on this leader. Christopher Bell trying to pressure this 19 of Mark Trix Jr. into a mistake for the lead. Bell gets a good run off of that chicane every time. Makes ground on him, but just not enough. Just needs about another half a car length of distance to be able to really try to put a pass on Truex. I think this 20 car and Bell, I think they're fast right now. Now we're gonna look on the inside. This is a tight pass. Truex has got to be mindful of it. Can 
Larson take advantage of this side by side battle. Make it three wide. Coming to turn one. Trying to be three wide for the lead here at Watkins Glen as they go into turn number one. Martin Trix Jr. on the outside. On the inside, Christopher Bell. And waiting for a mistake is the five of Kyle Larson. No mistake made there. So they stay in line. Trix Jr., Bell, and Larson. Bell throwing the monster block heading into turn number one, and that's going to cease those Larson advancement opportunities. Larson will back away, give Bell the spot, let him have it, while at the same time, Bell is in full court press mode on race leader Martin Truex Jr. He's got a run on Martin Truex Jr. into the bus stop. Not close enough to make any kind of an issue here. Back cam again showing us who's getting through that part of the racetrack. The best of five car, Larson really loose. He had a great bus stop, but lost a little bit of grip on the entrance to the carousel. This is where Bell is better, all through the chicane. Gets a big run down the back straightaway. You see Truex loose as he jumps over that curb. Now Bell, let's see if he can try to do it again. The last time he was able to beat the 19 car off of turn six, once again, they would have beat him, but not good enough. This end of the six track, carousel six and seven is where Bell is better. That's where he's got to take advantage. Right in the tire tracks is Christopher Bell chasing after Mark Trex Jr. We're going NASCAR nonstop. Great racing continuing as we continue our radio style broadcast from Watkins Glen. Here are the Ruoff Mortgage keys to victory. Final stop. We know everybody needs at least one more stop to make it. The goal would be only one more stop. When do you make it? And are you lucky enough to do it before the yellow? The yellows, I expect to see them when they do come. The crazy restarts and then calculated aggression. How aggressive do you be? Do you be patient? The goal is to end in Ruoff Victory Lane. Gonna be so excited to see them sponsor all the Victory Lanes from here to the end of the year. And a lot of drivers that would like to show up there as we see a battle for the lead through the carousel, Dale Jr. Yeah, this 20 car continues to hound Martin Trex Jr. for the lead, the five car of Larson. I think he's actually just kind of sitting behind these guys watching the show. That's what we're doing. Christopher Bell. I just think Bell's faster. I just think you just can't find a way around him He's got to find a way to be a little better in turn one and up to the S's to be able to be closer to him in the inner loop up there by you, Junior. If he can do that, I think he can make this pass. 
Well, this battle for the lead has taken our attention because it should. It is a great battle. One, two, three, throw a blanket over. But one driver we haven't talked about since the, really the beginning when he made his mistake, the nine of Chase Elliott, an extra pit stop. Well, here he is. You're on board as he exits the last corner. He has driven all the way up inside the top 11, Parker. Amazing under green. He has. It's been awesome to watch. He's got incredible speed in that nine car. As we expected, he's just being able to do it so deep in the field. He's been very happy at the handling of that race car from the speed, not having many comments, not making many changes right now. They're just hoping to have maybe some alternate cautions here that can get them back in the game strategy-wise, because I believe right now, track position and strategy-wise, they couldn't quite get up there to challenge the victory. But if they can get a timely caution, it could come their way with the speed they have. You see him make that awesome pass on Matt Bandetto. Yeah, Matt Benedetto sees him in the mirror getting closer and closer and says, here you go, buddy. Take the position. We watch the leaders, Martin Trix Jr. trying to stretch it out just a little bit, Jeff. Yeah, Truex pushing that car really hard. You saw how side, sideways he was off on the other side of the curb. All these guys are getting the most they can out of it. It's fun to watch them push to the limit. We had Chase Elliott. I want to update Hamlin. I talked about how he did start outside the top 20. Well, he's driven the ninth as well. So, you know, we talk a lot about strategy. Rick, I'm going to give you a little hint. You know the best way to make a good strategy? Fastest car. <laughs> I, I, re I rarely messed up the strategy when the cars were absolutely that fast, and they both the 11 and the 9, very impressive. Right now you got some fast cars up front there with Truex, with Bell, with Larson. They're the class of the field right now, virtually even, but each driver has had some challenge. Martin Truex Jr., less challenge than anyone else. He's done a good job of hanging on to the lead and pulling away from Seabell at portions of the racetrack. Looks like Chris is getting ready to close it up again. Yeah, Christopher Bell closes in again. But as we watch this battle for the lead, Ray Jones, the guys right behind him coming into the picture just now. Chastain, the four car of Harvick, the 14 of Briscoe, Kyle Busch. William Byron, they're battling themselves. I think Chastain's slowing this group up just a little bit. We're gonna have a lot of battles inside this top 10. And what a good day for Briscoe. Briscoe, we know how good of a road racer is. We saw him in the Xfinity Series win races. It's fun to watch him go somewhere that he feels like he's not at a disadvantage with experience. He ran that Arca race the other day, had a mechanical problem. We got, a spin. we got a spin over in the carousel. The 43 of Eric Jones has spun around and you did not contact the wall. Stay green and really tight battle right now for the lead as well as Truex is trying to hold up Christopher Bell. I want to see if anybody was going to dive to pit road. We're looking right here at the final corners. It would be a big gamble if you think the yellow's coming out. You're a little outside your window. He's rolling now, dude. He's rolling now, Steve. Eric Jones got rolling. Oh, the crew chief in me thought that was our chance to take an average day and make it great. And look at how tight it is now as they go through the S's, headed back toward you, Junior. Here comes the. 19 of Martin Trix Jr. leading his teammate, Christopher Bell, into the breaking zone of the bus stop. Everybody going through there pretty orderly, a little bit wide for the 19. Arcs it off into the carousel. That allows the 20 to gain a half a car length. The 20 puts a little pressure right here as the 19 makes a dive. In. That's the closest Christopher Bell has been to the 19, getting into the inner loop. The 19 had trouble the lap before. Look at Larson, he also made gain. Christopher Bell took a look, said, no, I'm not going to be able to do it. Can he make this pass to the right side like he tried a few laps ago? He's looking at it, not enough speed to do it. So again, we saw earlier, you can throw a blanket over the top three. Well, it's going to be a smaller blanket now as they're even tighter. One, two, and three. Martin Trex Jr., Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson. Larson looks to the inside, trying to take second away from Christopher Bell. And contact made. Bell goes around. Larson stays going the right direction. Drink it up. We got to go. Bell keeps going. We stay green. You see down here in the braking zone, the five car gets in there pretty hard, but Bell just doesn't quite give him enough room. Got to run a little bit wider than that for that guy on the inside. Look at the five car, see if he lock up the left, the right front. Yeah, he's locked the right front up a little bit there, but still he's right on the curb. I mean, he can't get any lower than that. I think Christopher Bell has to give the five a little more room, knowing that he's going to have the opportunity to drag race him into turn two and take the position back.
We've seen it time and time again with these guys down this corner. That outside still has a chance when they're side by side to beat that car into turn two. Yeah, Junior, you mentioned needing to give more space. Look how close to the curb. Look how close to the curb right there Christopher Bell was. Just did not give Larson enough room. Gets tight down there. I made that mistake. And Dylan. Pit stops underway here. These should be the final ones of the day. That's what these teams are planning. Kevin Harvick is in. Quiet on the radio, but Rodney told him, the crew chief told him, just run this thing as long as we can until we absolutely have to come in. Parker, uh, Harvick came in, four tires and fuel, Parker. Ross Chastain also on pit road. A great run for this 42 car coming in. Oh, we got trouble over here. Two Pensy cars off it. The two of Brad Keselowski with damage on the right rear bumper. The 22 of Joey Logano leaving. It's chaos. We have pit road busy. Cars spinning on the racetrack. Let's take a look at what happens. We're going to see two cars on pit road. Once again, the two of Brad Keselowski consistently having braking issues. And who does he hit? His oh, teammate. his old teammate. I mean, that's just bad luck for Joey Logano. Brad Kozlowski out of control down the inside of the racetrack. And if anybody he wants to hit, it's not this 22. And heavy damage, really, around the right rear tire of this 22 car. And the two, where they fill that for gas. So, obviously, issues for all of Penske cars today. Because we saw Ryan Blaney also having issues. Hold the brake, hold the brake. So while pit stops are taking place, the final pit stops, chaos in turn number one. It's happened battling for second, it's happened battling for position, and it's happened to teammates. Dylan. More of the Stuart Haas racing cars in here. Chase Briscoe continuing to have a great run here as he's run inside the top five really since the end of stage one. Hasn't said too much about the car on this run. They're fairly happy with it. to make four tires, fuel, and a chassis adjustment, Parker. Matt DiBendetto also on pit road. Pretty loose in that 21 car. You're going to see four tires here filling it full of fuel and air pressure adjustment to try and tighten up that 21 car at the top of the X, especially just lacking that rear grip for them. So, Steve, as everyone's coming in, we have 34 laps to go. You had said earlier that was probably on the outside of the pit window for these guys as far as getting there for fuel. Yeah, remember, it was kind of a, a game of chicken to get to this point. Some of these guys were last on pit road at 17, some 18, some 21. I think if you have fuel in the tank, you would run just a little bit longer, and that's what both the 19 and the 5 do. As you see the 5 close right to the rear bumper of the 19. Dylan. Boy, and that was close. Larson got all the way up beside him before they about hit the uh, the barrels there at the entrance of pit road. So Trex will peel off here. Just reporting that he's starting to lose grip in the rear of the race car. The rear tires were sliding around there as he was battling his teammate Christopher Bell for the race lead. And Larson, of course, as well. Four tires and fuel for Truex. Parker. And Larson was told to follow the 19 there as closely as possible, like he did on the pit road. It's going to be four Goodyear tires. Very happy with this race car. Just an air pressure adjustment. They also let him know that he was on the curb there with that instant crystal bell and then shake it off. And Larson's going to win the race off of pit road between Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Larson. So a big team effort for the five team of Kyle Larson, who's the winningest driver in 2021. I'm going to give credit to the pit crews, but I'm also going to give a credit to Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson's crew had the best average four tire stop in 2021. They proved it right there, even going backwards. But Kyle Larson gave them every possible chance coming on pit road, closed right up to the rear bumper and actually gained ground. Look at he is next to all the way up to the door of the 19 car. That definitely helped him gain position on this green flag pit stop. He made sure not to make contact, as did Martin Truex Jr., so that those cars stay pristine as they get ready for the last run here. 33 laps to go with them coming to pit road. Denny Hamlin right now is up front. Chase Elliott running in the second spot. Kurt Busch, Ryan Blaney, Tyler Reddick, Alex Bowman, all those guys running up top. Look at this. You just mentioned best average four-tire stop this season. Kyle Larson, 13.66. Harvick, Elliott, Hamlin, and Bowman on that list. Yeah, absolutely impressive. Hamlin and Elliott continue to run one, two. We'll see when they pin.
the FedEx Cup playoffs. It will be the hardest test of them all. Three stops, but only one chance to make it. The FedEx Cup playoffs for the PGA Tour's ultimate prize, August 19th on NBC and Golf. So we saw the nine of Chase Elliott come to pit road, and Steve, nine and 11, maybe a little bit different strategies. Is Denny Hamlin still out on track? Yeah, I think the 11 of Denny Hamlin, he's just going to try to run a little bit longer, hoping to not get a yellow, because that would actually hurt his chances. But so he can run five or six more laps, then pit, then get lucky enough to get a yellow. He'll have just fresher tires because he's, you know, definitely losing time uh, to Larson and other cars that have pitted Parker. Well, guys, we saw Kyle Larson do that awesome job on pit road. His pit crew nailed it as well, got him to the lead. This is what his crew had to say looking forward in this long run here. This is our longest run by 15 laps. So the play for the 19 is just going to be to try to have more tire left than you at the end of the race. So make sure to pace yourself. Got it. Exactly. Pace yourself. The longest run, as you see that 19 creep in the picture, just saving those rear tires, especially. That's where a lot of these cars have been struggling today. Also, this team is focused on beating that 11. Remember, they came in here in a tight battle for that regular season championship. They've been updating him on the 11's progress all day, even to the point of telling him in this last stop, they had to be 10 seconds ahead of the 11 to ensure they were going to beat him. So they're not only racing for the win, but they're racing against that 11 car to ensure to beat him in the points. Also, going through some lap traffic here and having to try to catch this lap traffic at just the right time so he continues to build on that lead over Martin Trex Jr. Trying to set these cars up on corner exit, not get bottled up behind them through the bus stop. Really important. And behind these guys, somebody we have not talked much about today, Kyle Busch is going to come into the picture in just a moment. He's sitting here running behind these guys. He's in ninth place, but when all this cycles around, he should come out in third behind Larson and Truex. Kyle Busch has done a nice job of managing the day so far, giving himself the track position he needs. He can win this race, a guy we haven't talked much about so far. Yeah, Kyle Busch right now about four seconds behind Martin Truex Jr. Uh, and again, Martin Truex Jr. just behind Larson about by a second. So after everyone comes to pit road, which they will have to do, Hamlin, Kurt Busch, Suarez, Custer, they're all on a strategy where they've still got to come to pit road to make one final stop. When they do that, it'll be Kyle Larson, who can make it all the way to the end from here. Then it's Martin Trex Jr., another driver that can make it, and Kyle Busch will slot back into third. Watch it. Kyle Busch come across the S's right now. He's been decent at this end of the racetrack. He's had a slip here, a slip there, but I would say just a straight down the middle of the fairway run as he stacks a three wide going into the inner loop. Yeah, that was a close one there again. Like I say, trying to get around this lap traffic. Can't present its challenges. You can't be held up through the bus stop or any of these other corners and give up too much time. Dylan. Here's the race leader, Denny Hamlin, in, and just reporting that he's getting really, really loose, or was at the end of that run. They've been battling that all afternoon long, so they'll go around to the right side, making a four-tire Goodyear change, add Sunoco fuel as well for Hamlin. Rich coming over late here to go in the back window. Didn't get it in there in time. We'll see where Hamlin cycles out. So a change they tried to make but couldn't get the wrench in the rear window in time. Denny Hamlin on his way back out and off of pit road as we see Cole Custer coming on to pit road now. But Denny Hamlin was the race leader. We'll see how he cycles out after this stop. Larson is in front of him now by almost 12 seconds. Suarez looks very slow on pit road. Must have some sort of issue. When Suarez came by me, he would turn, enter turn six with good speed, but exit in turn seven, he immediately went to the right, got completely out of everybody's way, barely Did rolling. Anything on the dash, any light? Remember, this team has had a lot of ignition problems on road courses, Parker. And he came on the radio and just said, no power, no power, nothing electrical happening even in that race car, so definitely some sort of electrical ignition issue right here for the 99. Mechanical woes continue. Remember, they had some transmission issues and now some ignition issues have just pointed out. So, unfortunate for the 99. The 11, we heard they were looking for an adjustment. Right side tires going on. Tired carrier looking to the front. Jackman drops it. I never saw the wrench go in. Seems like a little, little bit of frustration. Yeah, you see right there, a little frustration. Parker. 
Also on pit road here, pitting out of the inherited lead, there was the one of Kurt Busch. They've been on an alternate strategy throughout the day on this car, just continuing to fight loose, especially at the top of the S's. This was one of the loosest runs for him in the one car here. So you see it's going to be four Goodyear tires and filling it full to Noko Fuel in the adjustment. Question now is going to be how his brother does as far as each lap. Kyle Busch, four seconds behind Larson. Martin Truex Jr. just four tenths of a second behind Larson. So that's the battle right there as they come to you, Jr. Yeah, Larson and Truex still about the same distance apart from each other. Surprised that Truex has been able to keep this pace right here because I thought once the five car was clear uh, in the lead that he would drive away slowly, but 19 is trying to keep it right there. Interesting to me what these drivers are doing right now. Still 26 laps to go. That's a long time. You'd have to think you'd get a caution. So do you want to push a car really hard right here? Do you want to save tires? We all heard Cliff Daniels tell Kyle Larson what the deal was. Save tires. You're going to need to have them. Maybe that's the strategy for both these guys right now. Talking about fresher tires, but they're both on pit road at the exact same time. We're going to go NASCAR nonstop. You won't miss a thing. Twenty three laps to go here at the Glen and we're getting ready for the Music City Grand Prix which is taking place for the very first time for the IndyCar Series and Marty Snyder's there. Yeah from Watkins Glen to Nashville welcome to the streets of downtown Nashville cannot wait for the IndyCars coming up in a moment this course literally offers everything Rick downtown right there you can literally walk from Broadway 10 minutes right into the race course expecting a capacity crowd today over 110,000 for the weekend yes even a bridge there's two-way traffic on the bridge they race into the city back over to the stadium side yes the stadium the Tennessee Titans right there that's their home that's the backdrop for pit road Colton Herder described this place as quote brutal you know what else is brutal Rick the temperatures here in Nashville 91 is the temperature of the real feel 99 right now so these drivers have a lot to deal with IndyCar coming up next
Yeah, Marty, it doesn't look like the fan support has cooled off at all because there was fans all over the place. Nashville, what a great entertainment city, and they're getting ready to look forward to some great stuff taking place. So I so noticed Denny Hamlin when he came by me. Look at all the fuel dumping out of this. When they put the fuel can in, Steve, it didn't completely shut. So early in this run, when it's full of fuel, all that fuel is dumping out. Don't think that's a big concern because of how many laps are left and how much fuel they have, but could it be? Well, you're absolutely right. Luckily for Denny Hamlin, he was one of the last cars to pit at lap 63. So that's about eight laps, seven laps, you know, later than he had to, which means he doesn't need seven laps worth of fuel. But thank goodness, because there was a lot of fuel, pour, you know, pouring out of there. It'll evaporate right away. It won't hurt anything on the racetrack or any other car's visibility or anything. But, you know, a few laps of fuel dumping out of the 11, I, I don't think it will matter. But, you know, I've thought one way a lot and have, have, have this be a heck of a thing to be wrong on and have the 11 run out of gas remember how many times he had to pit on the last lap of a race there see chase elliott right here guys driving into turn seven he is rolling he's done all this under green flag went all the way to the back a couple times today but here he is all the way back up into fourth position he is going to be a factor before this thing is over. Yeah, ten and a half seconds behind race leader Kyle Larson. Larson's been putting some pretty impressive laps together, but we've seen great laps out of Chase Elliott today as well. Right now, he is solid coming into the S's. He is a very fast race car. Right now, he's running in the fourth position. He's just a tick over ten seconds behind the race leader, and he's been able to put together some solid laps lately. And Junior, he's got a lot of speed in that Camaro. Yeah, he absolutely does, but I don't know if he has enough to run down his teammate. That is quite a distance, but he is running down that car in front of him, Kyle Busch, as they work through the bus stop into the carousel. He's going to close in on this 18 in the next few corners and be able to make that pass. Really fast car for Chase Elliott. He's doing a great job. Let's ride on board and listen to what they're talking about. I know they can do it now. Can't focus forward. All you can do from here. I think you can, man. Keep the heat on. I think you can do it. I like it. I think he can, too. I agree with Junior. He's got a long way to go, but one caution, and he's back in this race. Well, 20 laps to go until the end of this race, Steve. And I'm willing to say in 20 laps, you know, lap for lap, he has a chance. I know it seems crazy that somebody can make up 10 seconds in such a, you know, closely contested field, but Bagley, when I watch this nine car making laps, he is in a different class. Oh, there's no question about it. Right now, he has tracked down Kyle Busch. Now, getting to the back bumper of Kyle Busch is one thing. Getting around the bumper in the whole car is something totally different. Kyle's having a good run right now, but when he looks in the rear view mirror, he's getting that mirror full of Chase Elliott as a streak up the back straightaway. Chase looks to the inside here. Just trying to put a little bit of a question in the mind of the 18 car, Kyle Busch. But man, that nine car is there, and he's going to be going to be looking to the inside there. Kyle's going to let him have it. Probably a, probably a good choice by Kyle just to settle in. If Kyle gets to running too hard trying to stay in front of him, he's going to make a lot of mistakes and burn his tires up. And really interesting for a driver like Kyle Busch, making the determination, hey, I'm going to be best served to let a faster car go. Maybe he feels like Chase Elliott is running his car too hard, eating the tires off of it. Just not going to put that fight up right now. Well, Jeff, I think we had that same conversation back in 2019. We see Larson and Truex, and there's the gap. Back to the Roval. Chase Elliott leading. Big mistake on the restart. Straight. Looks like a video game, if you can believe it. The only one who doesn't make turn one. Contact into that tire barrier. I thought his day was over. They taped the hood down. Taped the nose down. He storms through the field. All under green. No gimmick. No strategy. Passes the four of Kevin Harvick and goes on to be victorious. Are we seeing deja vu? Today, he locks up a tire. He has to pit. He has to give up his track position down the back stretch in front of Dale Jr. Dale, this nine car, it's unbelievable to see somebody make this much time under green. And yeah, now he's under 10 seconds from the leader and closing, trying to put together great laps. He's got clean track in front of him. So over the next several laps, we'll really be able to understand just how much quicker this car is. And if he can, in 19 laps, get to the lead. He's got three laps less on his tires. He picked it up, pitted on lap 60. These other guys on lap 57. So maybe he's not as concerned about saving tire. Maybe he's just going to push and see if he can get there. It's going to be fun to watch. 
We just watched Kyle Larson put down the fastest lap of the day for Kyle, and that means he knows the pressure's coming as we go NASCAR nonstop. Grab an ice cold Coke and buckle up. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. And you're going to have to tighten the belts if you're Kyle Larson because right now Chase Elliott is closing the gap. We'll continue with our radio style broadcast from Watkins Glen. But first updates on our top five. We'll start with Parker. Right, Rick, and the team has not alerted him to the speed of the nine at all. They've been telling him just to be smooth. At one point, Cliff Daniels came across the radio and said, make it boring out there. We need boring laps out of this five car. Keep it smooth. You have a lead over the 19. They haven't alerted him to the nine, but as we know, he's coming fast, Dylan. Yeah, Truex there in that second spot. Just kind of in a, in a similar situation, trying not to lose grips with Larson, but also being kept aware that, hey, the nine is coming. So Truex just running their race right now, running in the second spot, fairly happy with the race car. Hasn't said much, just trying to bring it home in the second spot, Parker. No doubt. And what the nine of Chase Elliott is doing is unbelievable right now. He was a half a second faster, then just under a second faster in that last lap. He was almost a second faster than the leader of Larson right now. He is coming so fast through this field. It's undoubtedly that he may catch that five right now. Now behind him is the 18 of Kyle Busch. He has just not quite had the pace in that car. Going for his fourth top 10 on the road courses in four races. He has struggled all day, but found a way to get that car in the top five, trying to hold off the 24 of William Byron. Yeah, yeah, right there. That is the battle for the fourth spot. William Byron having a nice day. He's looking for another top 10 on road courses this year. Message from Rudy Fugel, his crew chief, has just been to put the finishes together. They were good at that for a long time, but the start of the year feel like they maybe lost touch with that here through the summer. So as the playoffs approach, that's been the goal. Get back to themselves over the next couple months. Also told William to just keep the pace up that he's got right now because the 11 car is is coming he's got a little bit newer tire so William well, needs to keep his pace up.
And the pressure is being put on now by Denny Hamlin as he's closing the gap. Again, a great battle for the regular season championship between Larson and Hamlin. Larson is going to definitely be closing the gap. It was 13 points when they started the day, but Larson continues to put better points up both through both of the stages and now out front leading here if he can hold off Chase Elliott. But a good battle here between Kyle Busch and the 24 of William Byron. That is the battle for the fourth position. Kyle Busch in fourth, William Byron in fifth. This time through the S's, Kyle Busch is going to grab a car length or two, and he'll pull away from William Byron. But Byron's doing a good job of keeping pace in that Chevrolet, just trying to stay pace with that Toyota of Kyle Busch. Yeah, Kyle Busch out here trying to put together some good corners here to stay in front. He sees that 24 back there in the mirror as you watch on the Ruoff Mortgage back cam. No gain for William Byron through the corner that time. Trying to put together good tidy corners here and make, make some gains on Kyle Busch. Pretty interesting and different. Lines going through that carousel. William Byron just right on the yellow line. Kyle Busch using more of the racetrack, trying to kind of arc the center of the corner and help him on corner exit, get a straighter run. Two different takes, but pretty much ran the same speed through there. Yeah, William Byron to this 24. Ricky and I talked to him at the top of the show. You know, could he get hot? Could he maybe break through and get a win? I'm not sure he has car enough for the win currently, but put some nice laps together. You said a big slide right there, and instantly how much lap time it cost him. It looks like three or four car lengths. These brakes are wearing out. Tires are getting hot. This is a long run, currently 34 laps. Bagley. You saw the back end of Kyle Busch's car step out on him. He put those rumble strips at the wrong part there, coming out of one. It'll cost him a little time. That is on top of the time that William Byron lost there in turn seven. So right now, Kyle slinging the car a little from side to side. Looks like he's got a handful on that race car right now. Yeah, but he's driving away from William Byron behind him. You have to think at this particular point in the run, we're going to see whose cars have that long run speed and which ones start to fall off a little bit too early. It looks like this 18 car, even though he's moving around, still keeping the pace and driving away from the 24. You have to wonder what his goal is right now, right? He's just staying in front of the 24. We saw Chase Elliott pass Kyle Busch earlier, and Chase Elliott has, I mean, you aren't in him. Kyle Busch can't even see him, so Kyle really knows he doesn't have a winning car. Maybe just save tire, try to get a late restart, try to make something happen. Seven laps ago, Chase Elliott was 10 seconds behind race leader Kyle Larson. Now it's six seconds that separate the two. Kyle Larson still out front, Parker. Night Rick and the five team has not really been alerting Kyle Larson to the speed of Chase Elliott, even as much to say they're not that worried. Take a listen to this recent radio. Chase in third has been pushing really hard to go try to run Martin down, and he's had some really good laps, and he's about three seconds behind Martin. I would imagine those guys will race each other pretty hard. That does not mean that we need to change anything. Just keep being smooth, and we're going to be fine. 12 laps to go. I don't know if they're correct. He's been so fast. He didn't have as fast a lap right there as he gets close to that 19. But man, if he gets by him, he could be a threat. Yeah, pretty interesting. Been watching the times from Kyle Larson. No information to Larson, but he was sitting there running 75 flats, and all of a sudden he went a 74 50, a 74 30. Maybe he can see out of the mirror what he needed to do. Didn't pay attention to the I wasn't kidding. Keep it up. Some encouragement by Eddie DeHunt, Chase Elliott's spotter. He told you, you can do it, now go do it. And I agree with Jeff's assessment, though. Great speed out of the nine, but I believe that Kyle Larson is running kind of as hard as he needs to run. It's really going to come down to how quickly Chase Elliott can get by Truex. You see on your left, the sector one, Larson, good speed through sector one. That's up the S's in front of Mike Bagley. Yeah, Chase Elliott, though, he's got those Napa sails up and in the wind. He is hammered out. He is about to crack the five second deficit mark. If he's able to do that, that'll put him at the back bumper of Martin Truex Jr. And again, you can get to the back bumper, but you've also got to get around it. This is going to be an interesting battle when it tightens up. Yeah, I think this is exactly what Kyle Larson needs to make himself feel more comfortable about his chances of winning this race should it go green. And how much of a battle, how much of a fight will Martin Truex Jr. put up or be able to put up? when this nine car gets to the back door. We're getting ready to find out. You can see the gap continues to close. Chase Elliott fast in that last sector. Just hard on the brakes, able to make ground up on Martin Truex. 
got a gap now down to three car lengths between Chase Elliott and Martin Truex Jr. That's the fight for second. Now is Larson going to find another gear and try to pull away as he's putting some great laps together here late in this race. Under 10 laps to go from Watkins Glen. Leaders come back into turn one. Here's Truex. Elliott really shuts it down into the braking zone going downhill into the 90. But now here's Truex looking in the rear view mirror. We'll see Elliott about three car lengths behind him. Put it at two car lengths behind him as Elliott, we're all bored with him. He's shutting it down even more. The leaders have cleared four. Here's the battle for second and Elliott is on the move. He's gonna look low here. Try to get in the mirror of that 19 car. Get that 19 car thinking about what is, what is that man doing? Now he's right on his back bumper. Gonna drive down into the corner here, try to upset the air on the back of this 19 car, get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Can't quite commit to the throttle. See him slide in the back of the car, the 19 driving away. You can see how the nine car has just gotten slower. It cost him about a half a second when he got to the back of Truex's car. Just air being taken off his car, the visibility, not being able to hit his marks as well. All those things combined, about a half a second slower. We heard the radio from Kyle Larson's crew chief. They're going to battle for second. That's an advantage to us. That's becoming true as Truex is doing a nice job. Hasn't even really had to get defensive, Rick. Just running his line. As Jeff pointed out, both aerodynamics and visibility not being able to see the curve. Now the nine to chase out. They're right on his bumper as they head to two. Now, what can he do with him in the S's? Truex in second, Elliott in third. They're five seconds behind race leading Kyle Larson. Up the hill, now through the left-hander. This is turn three. We'll straighten up for just a moment. And now the right-hand bend that leads him to the back straightaway. Elliott is hammered down. You can hear him full throttle as he tries to get the inside run for second. And he's going to dive into the braking zone and just outbreak Mark Trex Jr. entirely. Slide just a little bit because he paid the price on the end of the bus stop with that aggressive move. But he's clear of the 19 in second place and now able to regroup and drive away. So now he's got a late lap time now. Nine laps to go, five and a half seconds back. Can he run him down? He's had the speed earlier. Let's see how much faster he can go now that he's cleared Larson and he's to clear Truex. And can Larson step it up? Can he find lap time? Chase is going to be pushing to the very limit right here. When you do the math, he's going to have to go faster than half a second a lap than Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson obviously has been putting down great lap times every single time by the start finish line. Larson ran a 74.82, that time Elliott 75. So Elliott's got to find more speed on the racetrack if he's going to catch him. One thing that'll play in his favor is he does not have to deal with lap traffic, at least for now. He's got wide open racetrack to work with. He can really get focused, dial that car in, be laser focused as we've seen him time after time on these road courses. The question is, does he have enough time to track down Kyle Larson? It's been impressive what he's been able to do so far. I just don't think we can appreciate enough a car that at one point in this run was a second faster than the field. You just don't see that in this sport, but this nine car has worked really, really hard to put himself in this position. Now, can he close the deal? And Junior, he's been able to do that without overstepping his bounds. Like, he's so fast, but he looks so calm, right? Look at the car. It doesn't look like it's out of shape. It doesn't look like he's pushing it past its limit, but still making tons of time. Casey Elliott's smoothness, his aggressiveness, Whatever he's learned about road course racing, it's worked, and it works at every type of road course. Well, it shouldn't be a surprise to these two. only going to pace yours this lap. Seven to go, nice and smooth. There you go, information to Kyle Larson. Let's go back and look. Remember, it was just at Sonoma that these two battled in the closing laps. Elliott on the five of Larson's rear bumper. A little bit of contact here. Elliott was unable to get past. Larson goes to victory lane there. Then we go to Coda in the rain, and it was the other way. So these two know how to run one, two. They finished one, two at two road courses. Truex was third at Sonoma. So it's all the same players. It seems like regardless of the road course, that last lap, Elliott about two tenths of a second faster. Not gonna be enough, Steve, is this five car. I think he's saved a little bit. Just knowing that he's got the lead, not had to push as hard. You watch the nine car sliding through the bus stop. He's used up a lot of this race car. We just don't know how much it might have left. And it looks like the pace is starting to even out now between the two teammates. See a little bit of traffic for Larson. That could be a big game for Chase Elliott. If Larson catches these guys in the wrong place, it could be a huge difference in time. Chase Elliott, his last lap was only two tenths quicker, but that was his first shooter lap. 
after he got by Truex. Let's see what it is once he gets into his rhythm. Let's see what his lap time is. Six laps to go from the Glen. Is there enough time and is Elegant able to put together better laps? That time it wasn't as fast as Larson. So Chase Elliott, he's going to need some help from lap traffic if it's going to slow down that five. Watching Chase Elliott, watching Kyle Larson come up to the S's. Larson, your race leader, he's out in front by five seconds, but he does have some lap traffic directly ahead. The first car he'll encounter will be Brad Keselowski's lap car, then the lap car of Daniel Suarez. The great thing for him is he doesn't have to push. Having this big lead, he doesn't have to step over that line and make mistakes. He just put together laps. They don't have to be the fastest laps, just good, clean laps. This lap traffic should do what it needs to do to make it pretty easy on him to get around and get through. How many times have we seen that two car backwards today? I'd be nervous with being around him. He's had a lot of issues with braking. I don't know if he's being told that, but really need to take your time around this two with Keselowski with mechanical issues. Don't want to get caught up in something that Brad's problem turns into yours. Brad fighting for position as well as he tries to go by that 99 of Suarez. And now the five is there. How will he be able to negotiate to get around them as they go to turn number one? He looks to the inside. He'll try to outbreak Suarez as he goes into one. He follows behind the two. A little bit of brake smoke there out of Keselowski. But it is Larson able to get by the 99. And now he heads to the S's. Larson very smooth now by Daniel Suarez. He'll complete that pass. Now he'll put his crosshairs on the back bumper of Brad Keselowski. He crosses through the S's. He'll leave Suarez. And now you've got Kyle Larson, whose lead is now 4.6 seconds with less than five to go. Yeah, that last lap, he lost a little bit of time. This two car has a little bit of pace. I'm not quite sure how much, but it might be enough. Just kind of annoy the five car here and take a little bit of air off the car, take a little bit of pace and grip out of the car and allow this nine car Chase Elliott to get a little bit closer. Still a big enough gap though at five seconds. I don't want to, I don't want my driver pushing too hard right here if I'm Larson Screw Chief. Just gonna keep him in mind of where Elliott is. But right now, enough pace, I think, to get it done. But a lot of lap cars, even ahead of Keselowski here. Yeah, coming up on four laps to go. And Larson has a pretty sizable lead. You can't even see Elliott yet. There he comes into the picture. Yeah, I like what Jeff said. And Cliff Daniels has been this way. Very calm on the radio, helping his driver make good decisions with this lap traffic, not panic and try to push the issue. Now the interesting thing, Stevie, is watching Kyle close in on Brad Keselowski. But Keselowski is catching other lap traffic. There are three other lap cars in front of them, a total of four in front of the race leader. So right now, things appear to be OK running those steady laps. But how will that get complicated, Dale, with now these three other lap cars that they're closing in on? Yeah, Kyle Larson just hopes that they all have a lot of patience. They're not going to do anything foolish or impatient late in this race to take one another out. Obviously, he doesn't want to see a yellow flag at this point in the race, but he also wants to be able to negotiate this lap traffic. He can take his time. He's got a big enough lead here to be able to work his way through this mess. That is not what I'd want to see if I was Larson. Look at that mess in front of him. Keselowski is kind of moving out of the way, giving him a lot of respect right here. Now side-by-side -side lap cars in front of Larson. If nothing else, this is going to kill this lap. It's going to be a really slow lap. There's Chase Elliott. Yeah, Anthony Alfredo uh, up here. He's running for Rookie of the Year against Chase Briscoe. And so the five is able to get by. He's trying to get by Alfredo now. He does clear Alfredo as they go into one, but he still has that 52 in front of him Whoa. of Josh Balicki. And there you see the 38 sliding out really wide. Larson still, this one isn't over, under three to go. That was a hold your breath moment for Kyle Larson right there when Anthony Alfredo got crossed up coming out of one. Everybody getting refocused now. Here's Larson closing back up on the back bumper of Alfredo and peeling out driver's right, trying to get him past before the interlude. Yeah, that was just a difficult situation to be in for the leader. And Anthony should have let the leader go going down into turn one, but just didn't allow it. Five car gets through cleanly and around the 52 here in the carousel. The nine car, though, is closed in, guys, within three and a half seconds. And all that fight cost Kyle Larson a second and a half or one lap. Good to go. But now Chase Elliott's got to deal with the same thing. Chase Elliott's got to hope they get out of his way, but they look like they are side by side in the turn six. 
Chase Elliott has to find his way through. It costs Kyle Larson a lot of time, but it's going to cost Chase Elliott the same amount of time. Coming to two to go, Larson, Start I think. To 38. I love all the information on the radio. At this point, I think it's a mistake is what you're trying to avoid. Make Chase Elliott find his way through this traffic. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. He really has to tiptoe through this minefield of lap traffic. Elliott's got one behind him, but he's got three more to go, plus about two and a half seconds of real estate. Time is running out, less than two laps to go, and Chase Elliott's doing all he can. Now looking to the outside of Daniel Suarez, now three wide to the inside for the interloop. He has a huge run on these guys down into the interloop. The bus stop, he's gonna outbreak them into this corner and hop that curb. You'll see the distance to the five car of Kyle Larson. He has a very comfortable lead as Chase Elliott goes into the carousel now. Guys are heading towards Jeff Burton and the white flag. And Chase Elliott just did all he could through all that. Did a nice job of getting through that traffic, but Kyle Larson with just too big of a gap. There he is right there, Kyle Larson. Just got to be smart on this last lap. Make no mistakes, clean racetrack in front of him. Kyle Larson started this race in fourth, has now been out front for 25 laps as it's one lap to go. Presented by Credit One Bank, the gap between first and second. 2.35 seconds. Larson ahead of Elliott on the final lap here at the Glen. All Kyle Larson has to do is bring it home in one piece. Keep it on the racetrack, and he's got this one buttoned up. Here he comes for the right-hander. Turn two, that's the bottom of the essence. He'll crest the hill in turn three, ease his way over to the turn four area, and here comes Young Money looking for the big money for the final time out of four and headed up the back straightaway. Kyle Larson cruises down the back straightaway, lifting and braking early, smoothly into the bus stop. No mistakes here. Cruise just rolling through here without any real pressure. It's going to be an easy cruise to a victory as he goes around the carousel. Great pace in this five car all day long. He's headed to you, Bert. Kyle Larson has won everything you sat in this year. Dirt cars, all types of dirt cars, road courses. Never won at Watkins Glen. A couple corners away from his first career win at this racetrack. Number five important for Kyle Larson and Hendrick Motorsports. And it's going to be win number five on the 2021 season for the driver of the five. Kyle Larson comes out of seven for the final time. And Larson is going to win at the Glen. Oh yeah, guys. Good job today. Great job. So proud of this team. Hendrick Motors Force, great one two day. Awesome recovery for the ninth team. That's right. Chase Elliott started the back of the field after failing inspection multiple times, and he was able to battle back to a second place finish. Fourth time now in the 2021 season that Larson and Elliott have finished one and two, and Larson is up three to one on that battle between those two teammates. 11th career win for Kyle Larson. And Hell yeah. You talk about momentum heading into the playoffs. Kyle Larson with today's win has a great chance of taking over the regular season points championship. That lead is very important because at the end of the regular season, if you are the regular season champion, that's 15 more playoff points for the winner of the regular season. Right now, Denny Hamlin, a valiant effort, finished fifth today. But that loss of points, both in stage one and stage two, could put Kyle Larson now in the lead. Yeah, I mean, an amazing drive by the driver of the five, getting out there, great coaching from on top of the pit box. You know, it's hard to know how far back Chase Elliott is and just continuing to save tire. And look, you see the respect between these two drivers right here. What a battle they put on for us. I was talking about the regular season points. It's actually tied right now. <laughs> Larson and Hamlin both have this exact same number of points. So what a battle with just three races to go in the regular season. And now we're going to see some burnouts, but remember that green flag pit stop. That's when Kyle Larson passed Martin Truex Jr. This checkered flag moment brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. And he's getting good at it. The fifth win already of 2021 for Kyle Larson. Team 
coming out to congratulate him once again. What a season Kyle Larson is having and putting on. Steve, you mentioned it. He wins in everything he gets behind the wheel of, whether it be dirt cars, sprint cars on dirt, late models. He's been able to do it, winning in everything. And now he wins here at the Glen. Right down there with him. Getting congratulations from the team here, shaking all their hands. You heard the huge cheers from the crowd, massive crowd here at Watkins Glen. Kyle, what a great victory! But there in those closing laps, I have to ask, as you caught all those lap cars, were you worried all losing the time there? Yeah, I was. Uh, Chase was already catching me pretty quick, um, even with me being an open track. So when I caught those, I think four cars and. Uh, got into the 38 right here. Um, I thought I would look at my mirror and the 9 would be right on me, but thankfully we had a comfortable enough gap to where I can make a mistake like that. But uh, I want to say a uh, big apology to Chris Ravel. Um, I was inside, but I wasn't inside enough. And uh, I didn't. I needed to have a nose, you know, a few feet further ahead. And um, the angles just caught there in the middle, and, and I ended up turning him. So I hate that. You know, I raced them a lot. He's probably the one guy that I race with the most in all my racing, so hate to hate to turn him like that. We've had incredible races together. But uh, anyways, hats off to HendrickCars.com. Uh, thanks for everything you guys do for me. Uh, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, Rick Hendrick, Jeff Gordon, Cliff Daniels, this whole five bunch. Um, another another amazing car. I could tell from, from about lap three after I stopped making a bunch of mistakes that we were going to have a car like win today. It's your fifth win in the season, one of your most successful seasons of all time. What does it mean to you to come here to Hendrick Motorsports and have this successful of a season? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, this, I mean, it really just shows how how good their organization is. All the people that they've they've assembled at their race shop, uh, all the men and women. Uh, we all four of us could not be getting these wins like we have been without them. So uh, thanks to them and and thanks to everybody else I get to race for. Get to go to Iowa this week and, and chase another big win. So um, looking forward to that and hopefully we can just keep racking these wins up. What do you want to say to another massive crowd here at Watkins Glen? Yeah, thanks all you guys for coming out. Uh, it's been it's been a while since I've been here, so hopefully we put on a good show for you. Uh, it, it was definitely a good show for my seat uh, when the three of us were going at it for the lead in the first stage, then there in the second and third stage. So um, just a lot of fun today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You can tell how excited he is, Dylan. And uh, a different story for Chase Elliott. Man, exhausting day, but what a heroic effort it was to, to get back to second there at the end. Uh, how do you sum up this day? I mean, you pass more cars than I think anybody out there, but uh, still come up one spot short. Yeah, I just I made too many mistakes to, to get the win, unfortunately, and made it too late in the race. Um, super proud of our team. It been a kind of an uphill battle all day, but uh, everybody was just super prepared coming into the day. Um, and our Napa team just did a, did a really good job of fighting. If, if I hadn't let them down there, I think we might have had a shot at it. But um, congrats to Kyle, Cliff, all the guys in the five. Uh, happy for everybody at HMS. I mean, Hendrick Motorsports has been um, working extremely hard. And, and um, not only did the people deserve to win, but Mr. Hendrick uh, deserves to win. So uh, really happy for him. And I'll try to you know clean some things up and, and uh, make less mistakes next time. Maybe it'll work out. It was still a great drive nonetheless. Second today for Chase Elliott completing the Hendrick 1-2 sweep. Yeah, great position for Mr. Hendrick. Uh, the team that he's been able to put together, the teams. And you look at the playoff standings now, Larson, uh, Truex Jr., 37 playoff points, 20 playoff points. Uh, but really an impressive run again for Chase Elliott, able to battle back up for a second place finish. And then currently the battle for that final spot, Reddick and Dylan Reddick did a nice job battling to a 10th place. Uh, Dylan back in 15th. The concern for both of them, though, you know, another winner. And we can see it. We have a road course again next week. Chastain was in the top 10. Matt, he had a good run, not to mention the regular season ends at Daytona. No one wants to go there <laughs> having a chance to be knocked out of the playoffs. For more coverage and interviews, you can go to NBCSports.com for more of the NASCAR coverage from the Glen. Coming up next, though, Steve, we got to be excited about this, the inaugural Music City Grand Prix from Nashville. I can't wait. I mean, Herda on the pole. Colton talked about being in a league of his own. A narrow, treacherous track with great views. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a great show. That's on the other side of the break. Thanks for joining us here. Congratulations to Kyle Larson winning at the Glen. Nashville is next.